Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this module, we are going to take a, more of a look at generators. So we're going to see what is actually happening when you say flip this way, flip that way, rotate, and just some of the other things that are, are going on there. Because it's important sometimes for you to be able to look at and see the effects of some of these options that you're putting in and what they actually look like. Okay, this is the course material. You'll find a link to it in the description. Let's take a look at augmentation. So we're going to start with an image that I provided on the course website. This is a picture that I took in Napa Valley in California, and we're going to do some augmentations on it. I created a simple function here called a uh, visualize generator. So it, it basically loads the requested image, generates augmentations based on a generator that you pass in, and it's going to create a grid of four augmentations. So if you run it for the image, here you can see I'm testing out the horizontal flip and the vertical flip. So you can see here it's been flipped upside down. Um, this has been... This might be the original image or flipped in a different direction, but you can see there's a lot of, lot of flipping going on. <laughs> now what you have to think about is does this make sense? So this first one up here, we flip the image upside down. Houses are usually not upside down. So you have to think about, is that really adding anything useful to the, to the image? Even though it doesn't mirror physical reality, some Sometimes just teaching the neural network to be nimble enough to deal with the data upside down now, even if that never happens, does give it additional information to train off of. So you'll have to somewhat experiment there to really see if it is going to help you. But just because you're taking pictures of cars and you flip it upside down, don't think that, that that's not at necessarily adding value, even if such flips don't happen in reality. Now we're going to do the with shift modifier. So we're, we are changing the width of these images. When you change the width and make things smaller, you're going to have extra space. And you can see the extra space here. Same thing happens when you rotate, and we'll see that in a moment. But the fill mode is nearest. So whatever the nearest picture pixel is, it's going to fill it in with that value. You can also adjust brightness. Here you can see I am changing the brightness on this. This is usually a very good one to modify. Now this answers another very good question is sometimes people, if you have a, a data set that has a lot of images in it and they're at different times of the day, you don't necessarily want to pre-process and try to get all the brightnesses the same. I've had students work on Kaggle competitions in my course, and rarely do they get anywhere adjusting the brightnesses, because the neural networks know how to do that. And if you put this generator on here so that all the brightnesses get adjusted, that teaches the neural network to be even more sensitive to brightnesses, because you've created additional training data. Images might have been taken at noon, but it adjusts the brightness so it's more like um, 6 p.m. or midnight. Now you have to be aware that different times of the day is not completely simulated by this because the, the shadows would be different if these were really images taken at different times of the day. You can also do a shear, which kind of takes it and stretches it a bit. It's not rotating it, but it's, it's just kind of like taking it and shifting the whole bottom part of it over or top part. And you can see the house is now stretched and and other, other things here. You can see the little triangles that result. That is filled in by, this is data that was missing because there, there was nothing there on the image. And it's filled in by the nearest pixel. This is another one. Things are very rarely sheared in reality where it just gets stretched and crunched. But this just gives the neural network new images that are similar enough to the original training set that it can probably learn some things from. So this is potentially a useful technique. You'll have to make look at, have a look at it, even though it just doesn't happen a lot in reality unless things like crash into each other. You can also rotate. Like here, you can see the house is completely on its side. 
And again, you have the, the areas at the corners where the rotation occurred. Because when you rotate something, that's, very, that's a very obvious sort of way because it's, the image now ha reveals some area where there was just nothing there before. So since you've rotated it, even though it's the same size, now it's, uh, you've got some blank space and you need to decide what to do. Replace nearest is it's usually a good option. So you can use this generator that I created. You can throw any options you want to in there because quite honestly, I feel the image generator documentation is, is quite bad in Curious. So this, this lets you play around with it and see really what you're doing. Like on the brightness one, they don't tell you what the scale is, but it's, I usually zero to one or zero to two. If I want more brightness, I bump up that top number. Thank you for watching this video, and if you find this information useful, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can find, follow along with this course as it goes. And if this was useful to you, please give me a like. Thank you very much.